March the Street of Trifleth tomorrow. Updates on this via our Blabber account. This is going to be interesting. And he said, let there be riots, and there were riots. How did this man gain such an immense influence over his followers? Okay. Believes that the President Kassart is nation-controlled. I mean, fine. President Puppet. I've seen the memes before. <laughs> the nation would have zero factual benefit from control over parges. Hmm. I guess we're trading into territory where facts aren't given any weight. So I wonder if that's her saying, like, man, eh, you probably didn't need to share that. Because we don't know, right? <laughs> this is interesting. Okay. We did get something new. Let's go back to these headlines. They say the crime rate is dropping. Minist Ministry of Security has presented latest numbers on crime statistics for the country. Uh, never before have there been so few violent crimes. So, on Thursday morning, the Ministry of Security published a new crime statistic report for the preceding year. According to the report, the number of recorded criminal offenses decreased by 4.8% in comparison to last year. That's good. The crime rates have been continuously declining over the past several years as a direct result of the implementation of the safety bill. Secretary of, Secu or Secretary of Security Catherine Delacroix appeared very pleased by these numbers and declared this development an outstanding result of successful safety policy. When confronted with the recent assault in Bonton, she once again admitted the ambitious goals of the government have not yet been accomplished. She further mentioned that activities are currently being established, which will have a considerable impact preventing further incidents. Safety Bill. Crimes per 100,000 population. 2009, the party is elected into government. Fine. Here's the safety bill. Fine. But, like... It's interesting... The drop has been... It's been dropping since 2008. There's a more significant drop right after the safety bill for that year. But then it's like the same type of trajectory as before almost. The safety bill is a collection of safety-centered laws and statutes created with the ultimate goal to protect the freedom of the nation's citizens. Central to the safety bill is the simplified, sped-up process of taking investigative measures against criminal suspects and their prosecution, as well as the provision of an increased budget for safety-related expenses. The bill also paved way for stricter regulations concerning immigration and general travel into or transiting through the nation. It also became mandatory to inform employers whether an applicant or employee is an ex-convict or otherwise regarded potentially dangerous. You can see some of the, like, intrusions here. Since the safety bill came into effect in 2011, the total number of acts of crime and terrorism committed have been decreasing continuously, and the trend is ongoing to date. Here's the peacekeeping mission. The terrorist incident of 2008 was a terrible consequence of the premature retreat of our troops from Parges, a region torn by several unrest for years by the order of the previous government. It, to fix our predecessor's mistakes, the party, when elected in 2009, immediately made preparations to send our highly reliable soldiers back to safeguard the region for the good of the inhabitants of both countries alike. After the Parge's peacekeeping mission had been signed in 2011, our troops were sent off to the neighboring country to perform tasks, including uh, distribution of aid packages, rebuilding of infrastructure, upholding the law and public order, training local military police. Due to recent stabilization of the parges, we've been able to reduce the number of station forces while leaving the overall goals of the peacekeeping mission attack. So, 2008, we have this terror attack. The way that I see this is like, after that terror attack happened, people start banding together. And maybe some change their ways, right? Things got out of control and, and crime slowly decreases, slowly decreases, right? This year, it dropped like, let's say, 50 from like roughly 550 to 500 then down to like 450 475 and then down to like 400 so big big drop this year then the safety bill passes drops by like a hundred per hundred thousand roughly and then yes lower declines but similar to what we saw earlier so i'm not sure the safety bill has much to do with it to be quite honest i'm not 100 percent sure on that Here's the Blabber account. 
Um, let's go back into here for a second. Safety and security, economy and commerce, values and tradition, migration and foreign affairs, education and health, fine, standard political stuff. Leaders of the nation, here's Robert Blaine, Prime Minister. As much remarkable visionary as an unmatched leader is a member of the party in the fourth generation. When the surprising death of the previous leader, the party Miss Goddard left behind a power vacuum, it was the young Robert Blaine who stepped up and was elected as new head unanimously. Okay. He will take initiative whenever possible and was sure not to relent until the party's ambitious goals have been achieved. Then we've got Gallagher, the Secretary of Economy and Trade. We've got Catherine Delacroix, remember her, the Ministry of Security. She's best known for inception of the safety bill. Peter Faulkner, Secretary of Defense. He created the Parge's peacekeeping mission, which we're led to over here. Projects wise, we've gone through everything. Participate. You can donate, volunteer, become a member, join the Army of the Nation. Fine. Blabber account. Let's hear it. So. Orwell notifies me that you just encountered a conflict, a conflicted data chunk. I have the feeling this will be a more frequent thing from now on. If Orwell deems the content of two data chunks to be contradictory, it will notify you by flagging them, flagging them as conflicted. You'll have to make a choice which one of the conflicted data chunks to upload or to upload neither. When uploading a conflicted data chunk, the one you leave behind will be marked as invalid forever. So please be vigilant. So this is basically Twitter, right? Kind of. Yeah. Followers, following, Twitter. Yeah. So this person says, what did you mean when you said Oleg Bakay would not be missed? Did you retire him? This is a misunderstanding. I am not happy either that Oleg Bakay has gone missing. The soldier is not the one to blame here. One thing is certain, Oleg Bakay will certainly not be missed. What? Huh. So they say this, then this person replies and says, What did you mean you said Oleg Bakay would not be missed? I'm not happy either that Oleg Bakay has gone missing. Weird. This article is complete propaganda. Mainstream media have been manipulating your your thoughts since the enemy or since the dawn of humanity. Time to get rid of this enemy, the national liar. They're like putting him up on the stand, basically. Okay, so we know that. Let's add it. Now that's a classic one. Demonize the free press straight from the dictator's guide to supreme rule. Oh, this is so like on trend. What about this? Before we decide here... Like, it's pretty clear that... That audio recording... Where he says, um... Truth is... Truth is dead, as you will be soon. And... He called this guy out as Robin Vart, so you have to imagine that it is him. They did validate it and said that it, it was. Now, this is not necessarily... It says was threatened with death. But maybe they just knew something was going to happen to him. I think we have to upload this one. Because here it's like they're unhappy about his disappearance, but back here in the call, you're the disappointing one. You of all people should. It's one thing that was true. Yeah, that's weird. And then like their public post is saying that. Reblabbers. This is the one. Of course he had to brag about McKay's disappearance after the threat. Still, that doesn't answer whether Vard is responsible. No, it doesn't. Which is what I was saying. Discussion. 
drained. I don't know what that means. What have you done, Raban? The People's Voice admin panel. Okay, saying out loud what needs to be said. Sounds like they are accusing us of having kidnapped or killed this man. What have you done to Oleg Bakay, Raban? Tell us the truth. And they're referencing this article. Let's not jump to conclusions. This is the editor, his brother or whatever, some relation. I'm sure Raban can offer an explanation. I'm starting to doubt whether TPV, the people's voice, represents what I stand for. We sell ourselves as a blog for the Pargesian people, defending their rights and protecting their freedom. As part of that is our duty to criticize the Pargesian government and the military is a prime target. However, I never signed up to be labeled as a criminal. We don't threaten people, we don't kidnap people, and we certainly do not kill people. Now here's Raban. Calm down, Shannon. Since when do you believe that the National Beholder prints, or what the National Beholder prints, they're only trying to frame us. And now this is the complex part, right? Is We're working for the government. A branch of the government, granted, but they're going to want us to believe everything that we hear from them. I have nothing to do with Bacay's disappearance. Did I call him? Sure. Did I get a little aggressive? I did. Yes. You see, Bakay and I, we have a history. Before we left Parges, Bakay had his mindset on joining the Pargesian army. He asked me to take care of his 14-year-old daughter, and I said yes. Whoa. But soon after, instead of returning to his daughter, I learned he had left for the nation. He said he wanted to find work there. Where's his, um... Not this one. I want his military page. Return. So 2012. Oh, he. Re okay, so he was officially absent 2010. Returned in 2012. Absent in 2010. Returned 2012. Before we left Parges. So when did, let's see, projects. So this was Terrace Incident 2008, Fix It, and like 2009, immediately preparations, 2011. All right, I guess we don't have a clear thing there. Admitted to have called him, but we already knew that. A little aggressive, but he says he's not, like, involved, basically. And that they had a history. This is obviously quite important. And that daughter's name could be a password if we find that out. I see, the two know each other back from when they lived in Parges. Well done, Agent. With the basic connection between the two clarified, our in-depth research of the lead up to this phone call can now begin. I need you to investigate and upload anything you think is relevant and accurate about the background of these two. Discard anything else. From what you gather, I will put together a theory about what happened and what we're going to do about it. At the very least, we need a solid motive for Raban Vart making this threat to Oleg and an explanation as to how Vart would, could contact him on his protected phone. If you need to keep track of your objectives, click on the Orwell eye in the upper left corner of the screen and press escape. Okay, so we need to find a motive for the threat, find how he was able to contact him, find the key to Oleg's phone, I'm guessing the daughter, and find Oleg. Okay. Now where's this confl conflict? Left Parges for the nation to find work. I learned that he had left for the nation. He said he wanted to find work there. Then all of a sudden, he returns and ranks up to an officer in the army. I'm fairly certain he works for the nation's government. So he's right. Right, because he, he was a plant. However, I have nothing to do with his disappearance and would never kidnap or kill a man. Do not believe the lies of the nation, national beholder. Man, I was aware, unaware of all of this. I believe you, but I really think you should watch what you say, Raban. This is starting to get way too tense. This is getting people worked up in both countries. Now a contributor comes in. 
Oh, same, different person. I'm with Shannon on this. I also believe you were a bomb, but we should be, really choose your words more wisely. We always, we always wanted to criticize. One could even say fight against the Kassart administration and their shady ties to blame, but we don't want them to regard us as national enemies. And this fight should remain one of the words. You guys are disappointing me. I thought you had it in you. Don't let them intimidate you like that. These are just empty threats. We have to stand our ground now more than ever. We're not saying we dis disagree with you. We're just saying to watch what you say. These guys are right. Where's this conflict? Unknown data chunk. Okay, so we have to keep searching. Let's go here. Angels of the nation. Oh, the word got out. We did that. Uh, this is uh, saying, Dear Mr. Vart, we regret having to inform you that we have temporarily suspended and we have temporarily suspended and recurring financial, probably any recurring financial support to your endeavor. Our team has become aware of you using our donations to support a cause that causes directly or indirectly. Oh, to support, support a cause or causes directly or indirectly violating our terms of use. As you know, Angels of the Nation is an independent nonprofit organization with the intention to support beneficial causes in or directed at Pargins. We strictly enforce a zero tolerance policy on endorsement or incitement of aggressive acts or violent behavior of any kind, which we have been made aware of your blog has engaged in recently. The payments will remain suspended while we further investigate the allegations. Afterwards, we will decide on whether to continue our payments or to permanently terminate our support. If you'd like to object to the suspension or assist in resolving the allegations against you, please contact us via mail or telephone at the next possible occasion. Got him. Got him. Okay, now what else is in here? So we have a user listing. So Raban, fine, Ilya, Shan, and Dan. That's, I guess, just part of this one. What about the log? Log for this date. Right after midnight, signed off pending article. Made changes to donations plugin. Changed header image on profile page, Shannon Carrillo. Okay. Wanted to be an investigative journalist after being subjected to the corruption of the national beholder. Join the people's voice. Okay. Oh, so hold on a sec. The People's Voice website. Uh, not the admin panel. I think I, I misunderstood exactly what was happening there. But if we look here and we go down. Okay, so it's just the three. It's just the four of them talking. It's not like a forum post. This is just their admin panel. The four of them are talking. Fine. Admitting to calling him, like, we've already had that. We can put in this information. I don't know if it's going to be useful, though. I'll hold off. We'll see. We'll see. I got to find the conflict. On the members log. Is there any information here? I don't think so. Oh, hold on. David. Oh, yeah, that's this guy. That's one of his, uh, his donors, I think. Okay. Prava City. What are you planning on doing against the FTP? Started by Jelena Lavrova, February 21st, 2006. 2006? City of Prava. My family and I think about leaving Prava. Since the FTP started due to civil started the civil war, we do not feel safe here. And then the mayor says the administration of Prava is currently in contact with officials in the Pargesian army in order to get some troops to protect the town from the FTP. There's not much else we can do in the current time, so we ask you to stay safe. And this guy says this is a joke, right? Keep calm, people are dying. Toscola says, my greatest concern is the well-being of my children. They both attend Prava Secondary, but I'd rather make them stay at home during these, during times like these. <clears throat> Teachers at Prava Secondary have been strongly urging me to let them go to school. 
I sincerely understand your concerns. Oh, here, look at this. As the school's principal, I will therefore consider our... Okay. Former principal at Prava Secondary. Oh, interesting. Okay. I think this is the conflict, right? Yeah. Doesn't think highly of the nation and never wants to go there. This is, um... 2003. I had learned that he left for the nation, said he wanted to find work there. Interesting. Uh, let's get the right profile here. School's principal. Interesting. I might explain his preachy attitude. <laughs> You're not wrong. I don't believe you. Everyone here keeps talking about how we're supposed to change things in Prava, but nobody ever takes action. We're going to leave Prava in Parges. Goodbye, folks. It has been really mediocre to know you. So now, Oleg comes in and says, leave Parges. And that's how you abandon not only your hometown, but your home country. And go where? The nation? That This pitiful stretch of land? Never. But he was planted in there. Right? If I go back to the database... Confidential informant as officer in the Pargesian army, which started... Here. 2006. And what was this date? 2006. Ah, do we have an exact date? No. This is early 2006. Believe me, you would be better off dying as a loyal citizen of Parges than an inferior renegade. In fact, I've devised my own way of how to con protect Prava and show that I'm the true Pargesian, Pargesian patriot. I'm going to volunteer for the Pargesian army and fight to free this country from the plague known as the FTP. So... This is when he volunteered for service. This could be part of his setup, though. Right? Because he was feeding us information. Man, it's tricky already. It's deep. Seriously, Oleg? You have a daughter. This is Raban. She's only 11 years old and she needs you. Please don't make any hasty decisions right now. Besides, if I may dare to say so, I do think the FTP is fighting for the right causes. Maybe with the wrong methods. After all, I don't believe Kassart will be doing us any good, considering how he rose to power. And mind you, Kassart's ties to the nation are more than fishy. Mind you, Raban, please don't tell me that you are a terrorist sympathizer now. As for my daughter, Radka, there we go. That was probably the password. You've been one of her biggest role models for years now. You know her well, and she loves your classes. May I boldly ask you to take care of her while I am gone? I'm not a terrorist sympathizer, Oleg, and I'm certainly not on their side. All I'm saying is that you should try thinking a bit more critically towards this government of ours. Regarding Radka, I do not approve of you leaving her like that, and I am not... Also not a Pargesian army sympathizer, by the way, but if you truly wish to choose this path and join the army, I will, I will not let you and her down. Thank you, I really appreciate this. We do have our disagreements sometimes, but you're a good person and a good teacher. The frick. I'm a bit confused on the timelines. What's interesting is Oleg joined this in 2003. The City of Prava website. Prava City News, Mammoth Skeleton. I don't think there's any of this is important. Prava Town Hall. Hmm. So Two thousand six, but he was on the website previously. But it's fine; it's a city website. But I just don't know if like I 
In 2006, assigned to the protection of Prava from the ongoing threat through anti-government group, the FTP, forces of Truparj. Truparjes. During the Civil War. But the whole time, the government put him there. Let's see here. It's 2010. Principal determined to keep school service going. Latest reports stated the troops of terrorist groups FDP are getting closer to Prava, which had made many parents raise concerns about sending their children to school. Therefore, to ensure the safety of pupils and teachers, the school administration has requested protection by the Pargesian army. Consider cooperation with the Pargesian army to protect his school. So when it suits his interests... Wait, army protection for a school? Seriously? Things must have been bad, or s someone must have been really worried. Despite the situation remaining tense in our beloved community, Mr. Vart said, keep the lessons going. All right. Prava Secondary Library to be reconstructed into bomb shelter. So this is... Okay, so this is in reverse order. Provide a protective hideout from combat activities by upgrading our library to a complete autonomous shelter. In the basement of the school. It's appropriate shelter against the horrors of war that your children should never be exposed to. And continuously do our best to provide a safe place. He's all about the kids. An autonomous shelter at school seems a bit overprotective if you ask me, but then again, considering he thought about getting the army for protection, this pales in comparison. Now offering childcare. Fine. Prava second annual math contest. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go into the insider now in his phone. And since we could probably guess that this is his daughter's name, uh, it's probably Radka. So let's get in there. <laughs> 